How are we doing everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mass and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C. Welcome back everybody. Uh, very excited to be uh, opening with you today uh, 1792 Full Proof Bourbon. Um, I just found this about a week ago. Uh, I've had the small batch, uh, but um, I've never had the full proof, so I kind of grabbed this as soon as I picked it up. It's a really good price point. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to do a quick announcement. So this upcoming Wednesday at 9 p.m., I'm going to be doing um, a live stream. Uh, so hope everybody uh, can, can join in for that this Wednesday, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and what happened was is I had these really cool uh, t-shirts made um, with my logo on it. And um, also has my, uh, my little toast at the end. Um, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So I'm gonna be giving some of these away. Um, so at the end of this episode, what I'm gonna be doing is calling out a, a couple of phrases, um, a couple of secret words, and if you guys can remember that, I'll, I'm gonna call out for it at the end of the live stream on Wednesday. And the first few people to, uh, to call out the phrase or the word, um, I'm gonna send some free shirts for you. So. Really appreciate it, uh, appreciate you watching, and now it is time to get a closer look at the bottle. Here we go. All right guys, now that you got a closer look at the bottle, a little bit about 1792. Um, well, other than the collapse you guys, I'm sure, have heard about uh, when their, their big warehouse collapsed, like one half of it and then the other half came down and they're still cleaning it up. It's pretty crazy. Um, so I had the small batch here, which I, you know, which I like. I didn't think it was super amazing, but it's a pretty decent bourbon. So when I saw the full proof, I was anxious to see if those flavors that were in there kind of even come out more in this. So 1792 is, uh, is the uh, Barton Distilling Company, 1792, uh, owned by Sazerac. Um, this does not have an age statement on it, but a press release uh, when it was released, I think in 2016, said it was about eight and a half years old. So interesting age uh, on there, but not put on the bottle. Um, so this is a, described as a high rye bourbon for uh, 1792 standards. Um, they kind of skipped their chill filtering process. Uh, they only filtered it through a, um, a plate and frame filter. Um, so, so it's bottled at the original 125 proof, um, entry proof. Um, but it's not called a barrel proof due because it was, it was uh, watered down slightly to achieve that 125 entry proof. So even though it's not considered barrel proof, this is still a high proof bourbon, 125, and it's the highest proof bourbon that 1792 offers, along with their small batch, their port finish, um, their sweet wheat, and also their, uh, their single barrel. So with all that out of the way, let's get into this bottle. So let's see here, let's open it. Oh, squeaky top, squeaky top, but good, good noise. All right, here we go. Let's pour this here. Generous pour, generous, generous. It's a Monday, so you gotta pour generously. All right. All right, guys, oh, spill a little. Oh, I just cheated. All right, here we go. So let's see here. So first, the color. We have a nice copper color. Uh, it definitely has an amber to it. A dark, dark honey, dark maple. Nice, good color on it. All right, let's get into the nose. Woo, so, <laughs> so, so the alcohol is really at the forefront on this one right away. Um, let's see if I can kind of work my way through the alcohol here. All right, starting to get a little bit of uh, oak. Not too much sweetness. There's some caramel there. Um, there is some, a little bit of vanilla. Classic bourbon scents. There's a little, little bit of sweetness there. It's a little bit of a grassy note too. Perhaps a hint of licorice in there. I could kind of pick up on licorice because I hate licorice, but <laughs> black licorice, cherry licorice is really good. All right, the, the alcohol is kind of dissipating a little bit, so getting more on the nose. All right, let's go in for a taste. Cheers, everybody. Ah. 
Wow. That is a, that's a lot of alcohol. <laughs> so the 125 proof, it, it's present. It is really, really present. It is giving me that long Kentucky hug, but the finish is, uh, it's all alcohol. It's very hard for me to, to get some notes. Um, I got a little bit, you know, a good amount of oak in there, but some of the other notes I was getting on the nose, the caramel, vanilla, a little bit of the, that licorice flavors, it, it's having a hard time kind of punching through with the alcohol. So let's go back in for a little bit for that all important second sip. Boom. Okay. All right, so the front, on the front end, you are getting those typical, uh, those bourbon notes. There's a little bit of cinnamon in there now that I'm getting. Vanilla, oak. Um, you're getting a, a, a little bit of, of cherry in there. I'm not getting that licorice on, on it. Um, but it is still very hot and on the finish, it's, it's really kind of drying me out because there's so much alcohol. Um, you know, other, other high proof uh, bourbons that I've had just don't dry you out. You don't really get as that, that real alcohol burn. It's just, it's, there's, the flavor isn't getting complex as it goes down. It's, it's a lot of alcohol. Um, so let's, uh, let's have another sip. All right, so now that I'm getting kind of used to it a little bit, the sweetness is still very much up front, but it's it's quick sweetness. It's not it's not a long lingering flavor profile. As it continues to go down, it's it's getting a little bit of a uh, kind of a, a musty a musty flavor, musty and grassy. Um, you, you are you're getting some um, some pepper, and maybe some some black tea in there. Really, really interesting finish. It's definitely not what I was expecting. It's strange. I feel like the the flavor profile on this one, the um, what you're getting in the front, which is very short, and then what you're getting on the back end, which is kind of lingering more with the alcohol effect, they're just not really balancing out well. So it's it's almost like you're drinking two different bourbons, if that sounds weird. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty good, uh, but the fighting between the two different kind of flavors I'm getting in here from the front and the back just aren't really meshing well. And, and that's kind of making it kind of a bummer for me. Uh, let's go in for one last sip here. All right, it's, yeah, it's still doing the same thing. So being 125 proof, I brought a little water. So I definitely want to add a little water to this and see if it opens up at all. So uh, let's see here, let's get, let's get a couple drops. All right, let's see what that does here. All right, let that uh, co-mingle a little bit. All right. So it didn't really change the nose at all. Well, the alcohol kind of dissipated a little bit. It, it might just be really kind of vanilla forward at this point. Um, let's go in for a taste. Let's see, uh, let's see if the water did anything to it. Cheers. Okay, so the water definitely, definitely lessened the heat, which, you know, is as, as expected. Um, and it's just really a lot sweeter, um, kind of going forward. Um, I actually like it a little bit better with the water. I think the, the water did it some good. I'm not getting that weird aftertaste that I was getting uh, before, uh, before water. Well, except 
No, I got, I did get it on the finish now and it was actually more pronounced. It, it, I got more of a grassy note with the water. Man, that the, the aftertaste and the way it's, it's finishing on me is just, it's, uh, it's not super pleasant. Um, man, that's unfortunate. All right, so this bottle here was about 45 bucks for a uh, foolproof bourbon, which wasn't a bad price, which is pretty much the reason why I grabbed it. Um, but based on you know what I was tasting, there are a lot of the bourbons you could get for around the same price, if not a tad bit more expensive, but way more enjoyable. Wild Turkey, uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed, um, Eliza Craig Barrel Proof, obviously, and then one of my other favorites, uh, Knob Creek Single Barrel, which is, comes in at 120 proof. Um, there are some really, really good store picks for that too, that you could, if you could find. Um, people tend to get some really good picks of that. I've had some really good Knob Creek Single Barrel uh, store picks. Um, so now it is uh, time for the, for the secret word for the contest. So as I mentioned before, uh, this Wednesday, 9 p.m., I'm gonna be having my live stream. Um, all are invited, uh, jump into the chat. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about Weller. Uh, Weller Antique and Weller Special Reserve will be uh, kind of opening these and going through some, uh, some flavors. I'm trying to work on getting a, uh, a sample of Weller 12. Hope I can get that before Wednesday. It's a little hard to come by. Um, and uh, as I mentioned during that show, we're gonna be giving away some shirts. So my favorite drummer in the world, as you guys know, I'm a drummer and also uh, a bourbon enthusiast. So but I've been playing drums for about 20 something, 27, 28 years now. Uh, my favorite drummer in the world growing up was uh, Neil Peart from Rush. So if you guys can remember the word Neil Peart or the name Neil Peart, um, uh, I'm gonna be kind of calling out for it at the, uh, at the, uh, during the live stream. And the first few people that can call it out um, in the chat, I will send you guys a free shirt. So really looking forward to it. Uh, please join me this Wednesday, like I said, 9 p.m. Find me on Instagram, uh, The Mash and Drum. Also, uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I really appreciate you stopping by. As I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's about the people you share it with. Cheers, everybody.